Hello and thanks for watching. In this video, you will learn about the carbon and oxygen cycles and some of the pathways of how they can cycle through Earth. So what is matter? Matter is any substance that takes up space and has mass or weight. So if it is taking up space in a room and you can put it on a scale and it weighs something or has mass, then it is matter. Matter is the stuff that everything is made of. You are also probably familiar with the states of matter, which are solids, liquids, and gases. If it is a solid, liquid, or gas, then it is matter. Here's an image of the states of matter and how if you add heat or energy to them, they can change into the other states. Matter is made of tiny particles that we can't individually see with our eyes. We would need a very powerful microscope. These particles have names. We have atoms, which are the smallest units of matter, and then we have molecules, which are the particles made when two or more atoms bond together. The carbon and oxygen cycles are important because they show another example of how matter cycles through the biosphere. Carbon and oxygen are both matter. Carbon is an example of an atom. You can find it on the periodic table of elements. Carbon atoms are often called the building blocks of life because it is a part of every cell of all living things. For example, carbon is a major component of bones and the proteins that build muscles. Oxygen is another atom that can be found on the periodic table of elements and is important to all living things. Oxygen gas is a molecule that looks like this. It is a molecule because oxygen atoms don't like to float around by themselves in the air, so they bond in pairs of two. Oxygen gas is written as O2. Carbon dioxide gas is another molecule, and it looks like this. Carbon dioxide is written as CO2 because it is made of one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms bonded together. Glucose, or sugar, is another molecule that is very important because it is an important energy source for all living things. Glucose molecules are complex and look like this. Glucose is written as C6H12O6 because it is made of six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms all bonded together. Understanding these molecules will help us understand the carbon and oxygen cycles and how they are connected. Let's talk about plants. Plants photosynthesize to make their food, which is glucose or sugar. We have learned in this unit that plants need a few things in order to photosynthesize. Water, sunlight, and carbon dioxide. Remember that carbon dioxide is made up of carbon and oxygen, so we should pay close attention to that since we are talking about those cycles. The plants take in carbon dioxide and sunlight through their leaves and water through their roots and use them during photosynthesis to produce two things, oxygen and glucose or sugar. So plants are a huge part of the carbon and oxygen cycle because they take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen into the air, which animals need, including humans. The plants also use the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in the water and carbon dioxide, and they became part of a glucose molecule. Glucose is written as C6H12O6 and is made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. So then the carbon and oxygen in the glucose could go a couple different places from here. One option is that the glucose could be broken down inside the plant cells and used for energy, just like humans and animals break down their food in their cells for energy. When this happens, they release carbon dioxide and water into the air. Yes, plants do release some carbon dioxide, just like we do, but they take in more than they give off. Or maybe the glucose is used inside the plant to help build it up, so it is used to make something else and becomes part of the plant. If the carbon and oxygen are now part of the plant, where could they travel next? 
So this is where animals come in. Many animals eat plants for energy, and so they can grow in size. So the carbon and oxygen inside a plant could go into the animal that eats it. Also, animals also need to breathe oxygen, so that's important too. Once an animal takes in carbon through the food and oxygen through the air, and water of course since it needs to drink, what could happen next? Well, animals eat to get energy. And through the process of using that food for energy, animals make waste. We know that when we breathe in oxygen, we breathe out carbon dioxide and water vapor. Those are some of the wastes of using food for energy. If the animal is eaten by another organism, its carbon would get passed on to that organism. But what if it just dies of old age? Well, the carbon in the animal would go into the ground and the soil, and it could also be decomposed by decomposers. Decomposers could also release the carbon back into the air as carbon dioxide. Humans also have an effect on the carbon and oxygen cycle. Thinking about the cow in the previous slide, we humans contribute in the same ways. We breathe in oxygen and get carbon from eating plants and animals, and as a result, we breathe out carbon dioxide and water vapor. However, we also cause a lot of extra carbon dioxide to be released in a few different ways. Perhaps you have heard of fossil fuels. These are oil, natural gas, and coal. These are natural resources that are found deep underground. They are also made from fossilized plants and animals that died long ago, and their bodies were put under a lot of heat and pressure. Plants and animals that die today could also turn into fossil fuels in the far future too, as part of the carbon cycle. These fossil fuels have stored chemical energy in them, and when we burn them for power and fuel, they release carbon dioxide into the air. Humans also have an impact through deforestation. Deforestation is the removal of forests when we cut down lots and lots of trees. Trees are a very important part of the carbon cycle because plants take in carbon dioxide. But if we remove lots of trees, that means there are fewer plants to take in the carbon dioxide that we are releasing. We also make the problem worse if we burn those trees because then it releases all of that stored carbon inside of them back into the air as carbon dioxide. You may have heard that Earth's temperature is rising and causing problems, and most scientists agree that having too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is contributing to that. That's why humans releasing so much carbon dioxide into the air is a problem. This is an image from your textbook that shows the carbon and oxygen cycles on one image. Pause this recording and take a minute or two to examine this image and see how carbon and oxygen can be traced through different pathways and cycle through the biosphere. You can also go to Google and search for images of the carbon cycle and oxygen cycle if you want to see more representations of it to understand it better. YouTube also likely has some good videos for kids to explain these cycles. 